Alright, last Thursday we had an activity and I reviewed what folks turned in and um, I'd like to go over the activity. Um, I was happy with what I saw, um, but that doesn't mean that we all couldn't learn from something or other um, that, that I'm going to talk about. So uh, I aim to go over, I debated what to do, I aim to go over all three examples today, but the first couple folks seem to have a fairly easy time with, so I'll probably speak very quickly on that, um, and then we'll move to um, the the other the other two ones. Um, one thing I've fallen behind grading. Um, I actually uh, had the wrong version of Visual Studio on my laptop, so I wasn't able to grade this weekend like I expected. So I should get things graded within the next day or so. All right, and I'll probably say this every every. Classroom. <laughs> uh, part of it I bring on myself. Part of it I bring on myself by letting people rework stuff. So that's always my defense if people are too angry because it's, it's taken too long. Is, is I do give people the opportunity to rework stuff, and that causes me more work. But I think it's worth it because, you know, um, what do they say? You learn from your mistakes. Oh, yeah. Well, but that's only like half right. Yeah. Like. Just making mistakes doesn't make you a smarter person. <laughs> you know? I mean, you can go around and make mistakes. I could go, I could switch and put my left shoe on my right foot and vice versa. That ain't going to make me any smarter, right? What's going to make me smarter is if I take a step back and think about it and decide, okay, what is the right way? What is the better? So you can learn from your mistakes is probably a better, a, a, a better uh, way to put it. Uh, at any rate, I'd say if, if you learn from mistakes is true, then uh, I would think that the Cleveland Browns are the smartest football team <laughs> in the NFL, hands down. All right, so if you remember last time, we said we were going to do a currency conversion. We're going to do it in three phases. Now, one of the reasons that I took this approach, first of all, is just to get a sense of where you were, right? That's why there's like a million questions on the ACT, right? No, no one expects you to get all of them. But they gave everyone 10 questions, and everyone would get through all 10 of them. Whereas by seeing how far people got, I got a sense of, of where folks are at in this class. So that's one reason I gave it. Another reason is that it's a good strategy in general, if you have a problem, to take a big problem and break it down into pieces and do each one of them. Because each piece then seems a little more manageable, all right? And then, I mean, there, there's like, there's programming reasons to do that, there's psychological reasons to do that, right? If I come home and look at my house, which is in, in a mess, and I say, I have to clean my whole house, that's intimidating, right? But if I look at it and say, well, today I'm gonna to get this room, tomorrow I'm gonna to get this room, the next day I'm gonna get that room, then it's still intimidating, but at least it's a little less intimidating, right? And, and it is manageable. So at any rate, we're going to go in and use the vertical scroll wheel to scroll horizontally <laughs> and open up Visual Studio and start out with the most basic conversion. That is to have a text box and convert uh, uh, dollars to pounds, all right? Which the conversion rate is like around 0.67, something like that. We'll just assume that. I, I guess I could look it up, but I'm feeling lazy today. 0.63. All right. So I'm going to create a new website. Empty website, C sharp. Put it on the desktop. I was 
less interested in the appearance of, of it and was more interested in the functionality. Uh, again, giving you an hour or so to do something is a pretty artificial situation. It's very rare in software development that you're, you're like given that, you know, given, given such a, a short time frame to get something done. Now, to be sure, you have deadlines, but usually it's over, over a longer time. So, you know, part of the, you know, so, so I was, you know, for this case, I was more interested in the coding. And this may also explain why some of you got so far, but there might be a more efficient way of doing it. You know, if you just want to get it done, you're going to take a different approach than that. So do take my comments with a grain of salt. If I, if I talk about how well we could do it better if we do this way, it's not a, an insult against anyone that did it a different way. All right? You know, hey, you had a limited amount of time and you got the job done. Good for you. All right? Uh, but we want to go beyond that. We want to improve ourselves. We always want to be improving our, our skills. So we'll talk about maybe ways that, that it could be made better. All right. So I'll click Add. You're recording this, right? Yes. Okay. If you really want to have fun one day and you're really bored, watch my YouTube videos with uh, auto uh, captions turned on. You know, turn off the sound and, and watch with auto captions turned down. Because that auto caption Does not work. gets approximately one out of 50 words correct. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's hilarious, by the way, uh, if you really want to have fun, listen to like uh, uh, rap songs with that turned on. Because, you know, who, I don't know how they come up with some of those translations, but at any rate. All right, so I'm going to put a text box up here. And we're going to put a button. And we could take this a, a couple different directions. Again, I like to just do a tiny little piece and then test it. All right, so maybe this is a little bit too tiny, but I like to do a tiny piece and then test it. So I'm going to go in, I'm going to put the validation in, and then I'm going to test it. And that's good for so many different reasons, because if you do a tiny bit, test it, it seems to work, and then you add something to it, and it stopped working, you can be pretty sure that it's the new stuff that you added. Now, not always, right? There might have been like a hidden bug somewhere that you didn't realize, you know, and you just missed it the first time around. So I won't say you're guaranteed, but you at least have a nice point to start. You, know, you have a nice sort of uh, um, uh, starting point. You can say, gee, I'm pretty sure this stuff works, and therefore the problem must be here. And that helps you debug. The other thing is, who wants to go home at the end of the day after your, your eight-hour shift programming or whatever, and feel like you didn't get anything done. So you, you put in a gigantic program, scripts, page, etc., but none of it works at all. All right? It's much better to say, hey, um, all right, I got the data entry and validation down. All right? That part works. So you can check that off your list and, and move on, and it's better for your attitude. So at any rate, um, I'm going to go in and... I'm going to change the ID to txt amount button to button submit. A lot of times in classes in the past, I would just leave it at the defaults and say things like do as I say, not as I do. But I decided I'm going to be a better role model this semester. And at least some of the time, I'm going to convert it. Uh, or change it uh, to what it should be. Yeah, we're, 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 we're trying harder. So I'm going to put in a required field validator. That makes sure I put, and I make sure I have something in. And I'm going to put a compare validator. All right. Let me go to source view and rearrange this stuff. All right, with required field validator, what do we need? We need to control to validate. Well, with, with, all the, with all the validators, we need to control to validate. And in this case, it's called txt amount. 
And we probably need a message rather than required field validator. And I'm going to say must enter a value. And I'm going to go in and there's something else. Oh, display. I'm going to set to dynamic. The compare validator. The compare validator, um, I also have to specify the, the, um, the uh, control to validate. to say must be a number. Remember the compare validator, you can, you, you can do two different kinds of comparisons. One is to compare two fields on your form. The other is to do a data type check. So I have to go in and specify a data type check. I did? Operator. Data type check, and I need to type, and I need that to be a number. Specifically a double, because it has decimal points. All right, and I'll set the display to dynamic. All right, run this. Yes, I do. Thank you. While you're doing that, mm -hmm. if you set it to like double, but you you use decimal or, or something else in your code, would it not pick it up? Like you know, like if your if your code if if I wanted to use decimal because it was currency or whatever, if you I mean I, I think we figured it out that it wouldn't work. If you have to use double if you're you're saying that I'm I'm typing I'm checking the type of a double then in your code behind the C-sharp file, you have to use double as your... Oh, uh, I don't think so. You don't think so? Okay. Uh, because keep in mind that that the, the, the what you're putting in is for the validation. And okay, what so you're putting in is you're putting in for... Uh, because that's a text box, and a text box, normally you can type anything you want to in, okay. all right, any kind okay. of text. Okay. You're going to have to convert that string into something. So I would think you could convert it to a decimal or a double or, or whatever. Okay. Okay. And, and so it's not that closely tied. I, I okay. wouldn't think so. Again, I haven't thought it all the way through, but. Honestly, I did that with mine and it worked fine. Did it? Okay. Yeah, I, I would not anticipate a problem. So we'll go in here and put this guy in. It should just be a copy and paste job. Unfortunately, it's unfortunate you have to do this, but you do. So if you're going to at least validate this way. Then we'll go and test this, and we should be okay on the validation.
yeah, you should be able to. Um, I'm not sure what that would buy you, but yeah, you, you can definitely give that a shot. Buys you the ability to basically you can code it to type in APT and double tap the tab key and it writes that whole line for you. Oh, okay. Um, that won't do me any good though, because because <laughs> this machine refreshes itself all, right, all the yeah, time. Even a text so. file help yeah. Me. So, but but yeah, yeah. In that case, yeah, you absolutely can. All right, so must enter a value, garbage, must be a number. Okay, so we got that done. So if we had to go, if we had to leave today or go to lunch or whatever, we would have that part accomplished. And again, don't underestimate that. I mean, that, that's good to, to, instead of saying I have nothing done, say I have one thing done. You know, so saying I have 15 things that don't work, it's better to say I have one thing that works Oh yeah, and there's 14 other things that don't work yet. All right. All right. Now we're going to go in and we're going to add the code behind for that. So. At least now you can say I'm making progress. I'm making progress, right? <laughs> or there, there's a, there's a number of things that, that I would love to be called like Zeller's law, um, and, and one of them is that a different kind of error is almost as good as it working. All right, so if you're working and you're getting a different kind of air, it's almost as good as it's working. Because you are, you're, you're doing something. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're making progress, yeah. Uh, all right, so let's go in and let's write the code behind for this. And again, I double click it, it creates a button submit event, all right. One thing to note, uh, depending on how exactly you do things, um, let's go to the code view. Let's look at that button. On click is button submit click. All right. That's simply telling that button that when this guy gets clicked, execute that snippet of code. I've seen occasions, and again, I don't know how it was, how it happened, but where you have your function called button submit click, but it doesn't work. Why doesn't it work? Because that button doesn't know that that function is associated with the click event for it. So you need the on click event on that button control for that function to actually work, to fire off. And normally it should automatically wire it for you, right? When you double click on the button, that should create the method and it should uh, associate that method with the button. But that's one like debugging thing. We'll talk a little bit more about debugging in a second here because again, systematic approach for debugging. If your code doesn't work, one of the first things you should ask yourself is, is the code actually being run that I think is being run? All right? It is amazing how many times, like, you look at code only to find the problem is it's not being called properly, that, that something else is happening that you didn't expect. So at any rate, let's go in and, yeah, go ahead. Is there a way to bring up the uh, click event in the C Sharp panel without going to the design view? Where you're at now. Can I bring it up through the source, in other words? Um, I don't know. Double click on it. And it doesn't seem like it takes it automatically that. Okay. I'm going to put in this, which is always the first line. I'm going to delete the then, because that's not correct syntax. All right, we do this again just in, on the odd chance that client-side scripting is turned off and this, this gets fired off and there's a validation error. Um, do remember that this is server-side code. It gets run when the button is clicked and it makes it back to the server. Now, given that this is a submit button, those two things always are going to happen together, right? When the button's clicked, it is going to go to the server unless there is some validation error. All right. So I'm going to go and make some variables, double, and I'll call this converted amount. Double amount. Amount equals, amount equals what? Zero. Amount equals zero? <laughs> One. One? <laughs> I don't 
This isn't an auction. It's not, someone doesn't have to like bid two next. It would be the amount times it's, it's, whatever your rate is. Well, it's it's the value in the tax oh. box, right? Yeah. So I'm going to take like the amount multiplied by my conversion rate and come up with a computed amount or a converted amount. So amount equals, and I have to convert that. So convert dot. Thank you. Two double. And what do I put in here? Text amount. Text amount. Dot. Text. text. All right. We want the value of the text box, which is the ID of it is text amount. Therefore, that's what I use to refer to it in the C sharp code. So whatever ID I give it, I use that to refer to it. But that text box is a object. It has a lot of properties associated with it. It has a background color. It has a width. A high, it has all sorts of attributes associated with it. What I'm interested in is the value of the text inside that. So I need to say text box, the name of the text box dot text. Now I'll say converted amount equals 0.63 or whatever the converted rate is times amount um, oh I forgot to put something for the results. So then I need to say label results dot text equals convert to string uh, converted amount. $100 should be $63 and so on. All right, so we got that part to work. Now again, there's things that you can do to format and all that. One student, and you feel free to take a bow, whoever this is, I forget, um, used actually there's a culture class that allows you to like format the, 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 the currency to match the currency. Um, so like if it's a euro, it will show, you know, the symbol will format it according to, to that. Uh, well done. Uh, you learn something new every day. I wasn't aware of that class, but good good for you, whoever did that. That was me. <laughs> yeah, all right. Uh, okay, excellent. Excellent. Um, now, uh, now, our next thing to do is add a drop-down and, uh, and uh, do a conversion between a, a couple different things. And just in the interest of time, I am not going to put a default for, or I'm going to put a default for the drop down. That way I don't have to worry about validating the drop down. But, you know, you could put select currency type or whatever and do that. Uh, I'm also, um, I'm just going to pick another uh, currency. Does anyone know a conversion rate? Euro was like 0.75. Euro 0.75, okay, we'll go with that. 
All right. So let's go in and let's add a drop down to this guy for euro. So we can choose between converting um, So we'll do this, all right? All right. So now we have to change the code behind. Someone that didn't get this far, someone that did not do this part of it, and I think there's a few folks that, that, that didn't get this far. What do I want to do now? need to put in the drop down list somewhere and, and say like you want to add selected value or sorry, um, but is it something else value? It's not selected value. Is it selected value? Selected value. Okay. It is a selected value. Okay, yeah, and, and like if you if selected value equals zero then it's gonna be Okay. Whatever. So I need to test the, the, the text box. Or I'm sorry not the text box, the drop down. All right. I need to test the, the drop down list. If it's Euro, then I do 0.75. If it's pounds, I do 0.63. All right? Simple enough. So I can do this, and I can say if, and what would the rest of the syntax be if? Drop down list one dot selected value. Selected index value or item? Okay. Value would be the best in this case. Why is that? What are those different, what are those three different things? One is selected index, one is selected item, and one is selected value. That, that sounds pretty close to the same thing, but it is different. And we do indeed want selected value, although we can make either of them work. All right. What's the difference? What is selected index? It's position in the collection. It's position in the collection. So selected index, in our case, zero would be euro, one would be pound. All right. What is selected item? It selects an actual item value. It selects an actual what? Item's value. Uh, I, 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 you, you very well might be right, but what do you mean by an item's value? It's the name. Anyone want to help out here? Because I think you're pretty close to having a correct answer. Maybe just a little bit of wording needs polished. Item. I remember when I did item, it, it, it said something about a number. It wanted to convert it to a number instead of a string or something like that. It was Select, a number. Okay, selected item actually is a list item object. All right? So if I did selected item, Might be a little hard to see. Let's go in and see this. It's already it's already pointing out that there's trouble on the way. All right, but if we look here, it says error operator equal equal cannot be applied to the operands of type system blah 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 list item. All right. In other words, the selected item is an item object. What is an item object? Well, a list item object consists of a value and an index, all right? or a value, a text, and an index. So I could say, if list item, if, if, if uh, drop down list dot selected item dot value, and that would be the equivalent of saying selected value, all right? Because the selected item part is going to return that item object, and then I ask for the value of that. Or, typically what we do is selected value. What was wrong with list? What was wrong with list? Selected list. Or not. Uh, selected item? Selected it returns list. an item object. 